at our moments. We're going to talk to Alexander Volkanovsky. Two guests left. Volkanovsky, Ali Abdelaziz. Always fun to talk to both gentlemen. Volkanovsky is on some kind of roll. I believe it's 15 in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Coming off a win over Darren Elkins in Boise, Idaho. 17 and one now. 18 and one, excuse me, as a professional. Darren Elkins, Jeremy Kennedy, Shane Young, all very good opponents. Mizuto Hirota. Those are his wins in the UFC. The man has not won. His last loss was in 2013, and that's the only loss on his record. May of 2013, to be exact. And all of a sudden, he's climbing the ranks. We were talking about him last week with Chad Mendez, and I'm wondering, after last week, where he ended up in said rankings. Where did he end up? Oh, there he is, number 11. He's moving on up. Still not quite 10. And, and I believe they asked me to do the pound for pound rankings recently for ESPN.com. And this is my rule. My rule is, and it's it's not just for rankings, pound for pound or divisional. It's for, for all rankings. It's not just for one or the other. If you have not fought in a year or... Like, you may have not fought in a year, but you were supposed to fight within a year, but you got injured, your opponent got injured, something happened, non-PD related. I don't think you can be ranked. So if 365 days have gone by and you have not fought for whatever reason, I don't think you should be ranked. So in this particular case, love the Korean zombie. Come end of July when he was supposed to fight at UFC 214, that will have been officially a year since he's been booked in a fight. I don't think he should be ranked until he comes back. That's my take on it, on the rankings. And then, of course, if you're suspended, you shouldn't be ranked as well, but that goes without saying. All right. Oh, I did it again. Darn it. Sorry. I keep hitting the chair and pushing myself down. It's very embarrassing. Let's go to the Skype machine and uh, not pay too much attention to that and say hello to Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. There he is. Alex, how are you? I'm very good. How are you, mate? I'm doing great. Very early over there, a little uh, a little later than, than we expected. 7 a.m., right? 7 a.m. In, in Sydney? Yeah, 7 a.m., mate. I've been up for a while, though. Yeah, the little kids, they wake you up early, huh? Yeah, I got, a, I got two little girls. Oh, my. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you for doing this, as always. I always feel, I, I'm a very guilty person, so I always feel guilty when I make you guys wake up early, but you assured me that you're up early anyway, so no problems there. Congratulations once again on another victory, now 15 in a row. I see you're still a little, you're still a little nicked up over there. Did you get stitches? <laughs> Um, I actually got a bit of glue. I got um, I got stitches at two weeks before, before the fight. Sorry, it's bloody echo on my phone. It's echoing for you. There's no echo here. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it distracting? Nah, it's all good now. You this sure? Be Just hold the phone. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, I had a, I had a stitches at two weeks before the fight. Oh, what? Two weeks before the fight? Yeah, yeah. Okay. From the same guy that uh, that busted my rib. <laughs> That's right. This video came out. So tell us what happened. Well, yeah, I was just training, uh, you know, doing what we usually do. We probably, you know, went, we didn't really go live, but yeah, I was just rolling. And then I went for like an omoplata. He like pulled me one way as I was forcing him another way. And then the, I don't know if it was the rib. We were pretty sure it was the intercostal muscle in the ribs. And that just tore. I just heard a crack and felt it just go, just felt it cave in. Oh. Um, I thought it must have been a broken rib the way it felt. I could literally feel something just pushing in on on my guts, and obviously it was painful. And um, yeah, man, I was I was stressing. I was I was I was devastated. As you could see in the video, I was like, "Oh no, what have I done?" Yeah. And how'd you fight through that? That's the most. I mean, I've never had a broken rib before, but I heard sneezing, laughing, breathing, kills. How'd you fight? Yeah, man, I was on. Well, mate, it was it was crazy that night. Because that was on the Wednesday night before the fight, so it was that three days, three four days before the fight, and um, mate, I couldn't even get out of bed. Honestly, oh. uh, I had my coaches, and um, and that they went and got a feed, and I was pretty miserable, and obviously I was hurt. So I just laid in bed, you know, feeling sorry for myself. But um, 
mate, like it was, it was devastating. You know, I thought I spent five weeks away from the family, you know, to get pulled from a fight. I literally couldn't move. I couldn't get out of bed. Like when I say I couldn't get out of bed, like it literally wow. took me two, three minutes to get out of bed. So I was water loading and trying to go to the toilet. It was killing me. And I remember I, I, was, I even cried. Like literally, you know, I don't care what people say, but it was devastating for me. You know, stress and like I said, I've got kids. This yeah. is what I do to pay, you know, to look after my family. And I thought, yeah, I was away for five uh, bloody weeks, and now I'm going to get pulled from the fight. So, I mean, I was crying. I couldn't even get emotional because it was hurting my ribs so much. So oh I was God. like trying to hold the cry in. <laughs> Mate, it was, it was painful. I don't know. It got a little bit better as the days went through. But, I mean, obviously, I did no training. I couldn't even throw a right hand. Mate, it was, it was just stressful, but I, I had to do it. So how did you actually cut weight? How did you run? How did you move? I didn't run. I literally didn't do nothing. I just uh, done my water loading as I usually do. Mate, the wake up was actually pretty easy because I was stressing so much about my rib. I didn't care about not eating. I didn't care about the water loading or cutting weight. You know, mentally I was just thinking about the rib. So honestly, the wake up was nothing, and I made it pretty easily. But um, you know, I had the UFC doctor, you know, tell me that you know don't train. You know, obviously it's going to hurt. It's going to play in your mind. And I literally wait till you to your fight, like wait till fight time, let the adrenaline rush kick in and see how you go. He said, look, he's had people have this injury before, never this close to a fight. He's had people pull out. Obviously, some people have fought, but again, not two, three days before the fight. So he gave me uh, some anti-inflammatories um, that were okay by obviously USADA and stuff like that. I wanted to get a cortisone shot because I was told that that'll make it feel better. But they said, look, the chance of you getting that won't happen. You're going to go through the commission. And because you hurt your ribs so close to the fight, you might be pulled. So I was like, all right, well, don't tell them anything. Let's just uh, let's just uh, suck it up and, and get it done. Wow. And in the fight itself, how much did it hurt you? Um, to be honest, once the adrenaline kicked in, it wasn't too bad. But it was playing on my mind the whole fight. Yeah. It literally was on my mind the whole fight. So I remember I threw the first right hand. I can't remember if it was a... Um, sorry, my daughter's walking in here. No problem. Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Please say hello. Yeah, sorry, mate. No problem. <laughs> the daddy life. See, yes. I'm in my pajamas and everything. Oh, I love it. Yeah, but um, yeah, so, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, quarter zone shot. Was that what was up to? No, you? you said that it was on your mind throughout the entire fight. All right, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so I remember I threw the first right hand or, or like fake right hand and it just took the wind out of me straight away. And I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? Like, all right, it's going to be a long night. So I was like, just, you know, just wait, you know. So a lot of times I was drawing him in and obviously the, you know, countering the right hand and stuff, it wouldn't really hurt because it was in the heat of the moment. But doing the grappling and all that sort of stuff, I was worried about it. So when I had him hurt, people were like, well, why didn't you just ground and pound? Like, everyone knows that's my thing. Jam my hips in, jam their head to the floor and cave their head in, you know, that that's my style. But I was so worried about jamming my my hips and my rib into his legs that i sort of like folded and at the same time he would come in for the takedown because bloody it's it's darren elkins you know you yeah. can't kill the bloke so he was already trying to take me down as i had him hurt and then uh, um the neck was there so i just went to that i was thinking man quick finish i need a quick finish because i don't want to sure. fight this whole fight with a busted rib and so when did you cut when did you suffer the cut when did I what? When did I you cut? Suffer? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, two weeks before. We're just wrestling. Jeez. And um, I don't know how it happened, but he, he went to turn around. Like I had his back turned around and a spinning elbow straight to my eye. Same and, guy. Uh, he... What was that? Sorry. Same guy who injured your rib cut you? Yeah, yeah. That was just an accident. Honestly, uh, I, I, I'm taking the piss just stirring him up. But, you know, it was both, both just made, I don't know. Wow. It to be, I guess. Did you tell the commission about that, or did you hide it from them? Uh, no, I didn't tell them nothing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, yeah. in the end, you get the win, but do you feel like you could have performed better had you not had the, the injured rib? 100%. You know, a lot of, I, 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 you know I no disrespect for Darren Elkins, but I honestly believe I would have got the finish. I just had it playing on my mind the whole time, even in some of the, the moments where I'd throw throw like punches I'll have him even hurt or even when we had exchanges halfway through our exchange like going toe to toe I'll be like oh shit waiting for a knee to come to my rib all I needed was one good solid hit to 
because he was kicking the wrong side. Everyone's like, well, he was kicking the rim, oh. but he was hitting the wrong side. So I was like, well, yeah, you can kick that all day. I don't care. But um, I was worried if he touches this other side, there's a good chance of going down. So I, was, I would sort of hesitate and then just try and jam in. It was just, it was really, really awkward for me. I had a plane in my mind the whole time. I have talked about the rankings ad nauseum. I feel like they're very flawed. I personally feel like they should get rid of them. However, that's what we go by now. You are finally ranked. It's crazy to me that you've won 15 in a row and you just beat a guy like Darren Elkins who was on the roll that he was on and you're only number 11 at the moment. Are you content with this or do you feel like you got a bit screwed? Look, man, it is what it is. I know, I know how it works. You know, I've, I've been pretty vocal about what I think about it. Even Darren Elkins, as I said, he shouldn't be ranked where he was. He, would have, he should have been ranked top five, yeah. you know, for sure. You know, five-fight win streak or six-fight win streak, you know, taking out, you know, look at the guys he took out as well. And, um, you know, I just think that he was hard done by. He shouldn't have had to fight me. I'll be I'll be straight up. You know, I'm a realist. Yeah. But he did. And now I'm like, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off where, where he finished off. You know what I mean? So I was expecting him to be ranked around there, even though I think we should we both should have been ranked higher. But what do you do? But now um, that's, that's why I wanted to call out Chad Mendes as well, because I knew straight away that, you know, he would get a coming off a suspension, two losses and a suspension. I knew he would get one win and he'd be right up there. So I was like, you know, I, I think that's a load of shit. And that's why I want to fight him. You know, he's coming off, he's coming off a suspension. You know, I'm, you, you know me, I'm a pretty nice guy and a respectful guy. But, you know, he's saying that he wants a top guy. He might fight me for rankings, right? He's not in a position to call the shots. So uh, I think it's a fair fight. I'm on a 15 fight win streak, 5-0 and in the UFC. He's coming off a suspension. Again, he can't call the shots. He reckons he will knock me out if we, we fight. Let's, let's bang it out. Let's let the two, the two dwarfs go at it. <laughs> I love this fight. I, I said it that night. I think it's a great idea. And I think you did very well calling him out and, and, and targeting him. Is the UFC on board? What kind of feedback have you received from them? Oh, look, it's still early days, but um, I need to, to get. I just need to get the clearance, which yeah. I get today uh, for the the rib. I'm sure it's just in a crossbow muscle, so I'm not worried about that. I'll get that, and then uh, you know my manager's going to be talking to um, Sean Shelby, and we'll see. But I mean, a lot of people want it. A lot of people are talking about it. And again, you know, he's he obviously he wants a top three or something like that. But mate, you got caught cheating. Look, I don't know the situation. I'm, people are going to get up me for saying that. You know, but everyone's going to make excuses. They're always going to say something was tainted and all that. It, it might be true. Some of the cases might be, but everyone says it. Like, do you really believe them all? You know, I don't know. So, you know, it's it's just, it is what it is, mate. I, I think I think he's full of and I want to punch his face in. Wow. I haven't, I haven't heard you like this. This is the, you're yeah, fired I mean, up. Yeah. Look, I'll, again, you know, I'm a respectful guy. You know, I'm honest type of guy. But, you know, he's, again, he's in a position where, oh, yeah, I'll see, I'll do this, I'll do that. Again, he looks like a, a decent bloke, a nice guy, but he got caught cheating, and these are the guys I want. You know, I'm an honest guy. He's obviously not honest. Let me take him outside. Let him take, let me take him off the rankings. Yeah, and, 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 I mean, I would imagine in your mind, be Chad Mendes, you're right there, right? You're, you're right on the doorstep. Yeah. Obviously, there's a, a, a bit of a strategic sure, uh, go sure. there as well, but, I mean... <laughs> I just don't think he's in a position to call the shots. Uh, do you? Like, you know, do you believe he's no, coming off a two-year suspension and two losses before that? I know he look. He's he's a great athlete. He's killed it for so long, but he's not in a position where he can just have a, a fight against. I think what Yuri was 15, 15 or something. Uh, you know, I fought a guy higher ranked. I beat him. I think it makes sense. Yes. I actually agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, I think it would be really awesome to see the fight in Australia. I don't think I, I don't think you're going to get him to fight you and fight you in Australia because I know they're going to Adelaide uh, later on this year. That might be wishful thinking, but I would imagine. I mean, you just fought in Idaho of all places. What was that like, by the way? Did you enjoy going all the way to Idaho from Australia? Mate, I loved it over there. I loved it because <laughs> I was in Vegas the week before. Yeah. So I was uh, in Vegas uh, with the boys because you know I was training. Obviously, I fight out of freestyle fighting gym with my coach Joe Lopez where a lot of people think I train out of city kickboxing, but I only do a bit of my camp there with some of the guys. But, um, you know, so I've done a lot of my camp for this fight there. So I went over there in Vegas, watched the boys fight. You know, Shane Young as well, two weeks before that. Uh -huh. uh, easy, easy, then Dan Hooker all put on performances and I was icing on the cake. We have we went four from four. That's what I mean. Anzacs have taken over. We've yeah. taken over. You guys are, are on fire. It's unbelievable what your team has done. Um, and, and you just mentioned all the names. What would you say, Anzacs? 
that's Anzacs, yeah, yeah. Australia, Australia, New, New Zealand. Zealand. That's yeah, what they're. That's I, a... I didn't know that. That's what you guys called uh, yourselves. Yeah, well, yeah, that was obviously that's getting back into the history, and that's a, like back in the war and all that. The Anzacs, you know, but uh, wow. you know, it's just yeah, obviously it's it's short short for saying Australian and the New Zealand. Sure, sure, of course. New Zealand hasn't taken over, so What's... anyway, most people I thought you knew. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Now, I would imagine the confidence level of the team right now has to be sky high, right? Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Like, even, like, obviously, it's not just um, guys out of city kickboxing. Yeah. Look at all the upper boys. You know, Robert Whitaker, he's a champ. You got yeah. Tai Tuivasa, like, the list goes on. Yeah. We're, we're, we're dominating. You know, we're, we're, you know, we used to, I used to say, like, you know, the Aussies were just filling spots. You know, you know we're, we're a bit behind when it comes to the martial arts. We're now getting these young guns coming through. That training, training for years, training MMA, you know, specifically MMA, and you know, we've got some good athletes, athletes on this side of the world, and now we're really starting to show, show what we're made of. Amazing. Uh, in a perfect world, do you want to fight again this year, or do you want to take the rest of the year off to heal up these injuries? Nah, perfect world. I want two fights this year. Oh my! So, Jeez. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to fight in a, you know, a couple of months, and then fight in Adelaide. Oh, okay. So squeeze. You don't think you're going to get so get Chad early on? Maybe September, October, and then fight Adelaide December. Mate, I would absolutely love that. That would be perfect. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and right now, top of the division, Max Holloway, Brian Ortega, Jeremy Stevens, Jose Aldo, Frankie Edgar, Chan Sung Jung, they're all jockeying. By the time you make it to the top, who do you think is going to be there waiting? Who do you feel is going to be the man holding the belt? Mate, it's such a stacked division. It yeah. could be anyone. Honestly, it's one of them, you know, one of the most stacked divisions. Like Lula, top 15, you've got absolute killers all the way. Respect to them all, but who do I reckon by the time I'm up there? Well, I don't even know. Is Max Holloway still going to be fighting? I really yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You probably know more than me what's happening there, but it doesn't look good. So uh, I'll, I'll say, you know, you've got guys like, yeah, Brian Ortega is just on a tear at the moment. So... Maybe him. Obviously, he's he's the next in line. So I've got my I've got my on all of them. Yeah. Uh, I'm expecting to be there very soon. So I'll say Brian will take it just because I know he'll be fighting for an interim title next. What's the message to Chad Mendez? He says thanks, but no thanks. Get a little higher rank. What's the final message here? Hey, again, I'm a respectful guy. All respect to you. But you got caught cheating. You don't call the shots. Let's fight. Let's 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 let like I said, let the dwarfs go at it. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate it very much, Alex. Congratulations on winning 15 straight. That is quite the achievement. And uh, and 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 wow, knowing now what we you know we know about what you were dealing with going into that fight and during that fight makes the win over someone like Darren Elkins all that more impressive. So kudos to you. And again, thank you for doing this so early in the morning. No worries at all. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, Alex Volkanovsky, climbing the ranks, says he wants to fight uh, Chad Mendez, who did re-enter the rankings and is now ranked number seven. He is on a roll. He is on a roll, 15 in a row. Reminds me a little bit of... Jimmy Rivera is the kind of guy who was winning so many fights in a row and wasn't, you know, getting a lot of attention. And now here he is uh, on, on this incredible winning streak. And it's tough to get fights. Oh, relax. Danny's saying that I haven't heard of. What is this guy? Rudimentary. Okay, just relax. All right. Thank you very much to Alex Volkanovsky. That team is on a roll. Shane Young, Israel Adesanya, Dan Hooker, and now Volkanovsky. What a run for those guys. What a run for that team. Okay. One more guest to go on this stack day. What a busy day it has been. It has been dizzying. And uh, thank you very much to the team in the back for handling all the moving parts. Matter of moments, we're going to talk to Ali Abdelaziz. Everyone always loves to hear from Ali. He always has a lot on his mind. And of course, we're all wondering about Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Asked Fyodor Emelianenko about Conor being an invited guest of President 
Vladimir Putin, Khabib Nurmagomedov taking a picture among the people. And as I said last week on the Ariel and the Bad Guy show on ESPN Plus, uh, they are on a collision course unlike any other. To me, this fight is trending in the right direction. It is trending to be the biggest fight in UFC history. It is trending to be the biggest fight in MMA history. I think it will be the most lucrative fight in MMA history. I also think that it has the opportunity, if things continue to go in the right direction, I truly believe that it has the opportunity to sell 2 million or more pay-per-views. That's never been done before. UFC doesn't make its numbers uh, public, but to the best of our knowledge, the record is at around 1.7 or so. And as I said last week, it feels so personal. The World Cup pictures added another element to it. What happened in Brooklyn, for better or worse, added another element to it. And then you have, of course, you know, the biggest star in the history of MMA, the biggest star in combat sports right now, hopefully returning. Um, it's just it's just a perfect storm against a guy who's undefeated, who is so dominant, who's not just undefeated and dominant, but has a fan base that is incredibly loyal, that has his back, that loves him. It's just an incredible, I mean, it's a promoter's dream, the whole thing. It really is. Now let's see if they can get it done. A man who certainly knows a thing or two about the status of that fight and the buildup of that fight, a man who's been right in the middle of it all, is Ali Abdelaziz, manager to the stars. There he is. Ali, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. How come I can't see a big nose? Yes, uh, that, that we are working on that. <laughs> we are working on that, Ali. I know you love to see my nose. Uh, that, is, uh, that is coming soon. For now, though, you'll have to... Uh, You'll have to deal with this. Is that okay? Okay, no problem. Jeez Louise, look at those biceps just like bursting out of the, 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 the screen there. Wow, it's, it's very distracting. I'll hide it. Okay, where are you right now? <laughs> where am I? Yeah. I'm at my office. <laughs> that doesn't look like your office. You've done uh, interviews from your office before. This looks different. This looks like somewhere I've been before. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe not welcome, but I've been. Is this the UFC headquarters? Yeah, I got a special guest here with me. That's why I'm here. Who's that? Come, come. Who's it, Dana White? The one and only. Oh, Jessica, Jessica I. Evil Eye. That's who I got with me. Oh, wow. Hello, Jessica. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? What What brings you to Las Vegas? I mean, I told you we were working on fun things, and this is my uh, my special guest. Wow. So you're, you're, you're in business with Ali? Yeah. I mean, who better than to do business than with the best? Okay. Um, I'm I'm on uh, this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> have you have you got have you signed her next fight, Ali? Maybe. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, we just uh you know we just tried to get Jessica healthy. Okay. Because uh, we tried to get her prepared because I think she should get the next title shot. You know. And uh, I think I think she have a big enough name. She fought in big fights. Her next fight should be a title shot. Does the UFC agree? <laughs> You know, they agree, disagree. We, we, we always get the business done behind closed doors. Okay. And we'll let you know. Now, uh, now, how many UFC fighters is this, now that you've added Jessica? Stop counting my money, man. <laughs> well, no, I just want to know. You know the number. I know for sure that you know the number. It's, it's, I don't know, to be honest. Is it over 60? I don't know yet. I don't know. Wow, okay. Well, business is good, obviously. Let me talk about the biggest one, Khabib versus Connor. What is the status of that fight right now? Connor, who? Come on, stop it. I said, you know, I, I, to be honest, man, at the end of the day, we are training. We are getting ready for somebody, you know. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, did Connor have some legal problems? And, you know, and, uh, he have a boss. He have a boss. He works for a boss. And I haven't heard anything from his boss. Connor's boss have not called me. Have not talked to me. Have not asked me about anything. So Habib is training for when? I said Connor is boss. Yeah. Have not called me. Have not asked about anything yet. You know who's Connor's boss, right? Who's Connor's boss? 
He's, he's Connor's number one bit for Dana White. He's, he's he write his base check. You know, he's this boss. So, so you're waiting to hear from Dana? Yeah, because he's Connor's boss. He worked, you know, he worked. Connor worked for Dana White, you know. And this is why I don't talk with Connor. Dana White knows something or his team, they're going to let me know. But for right now, you know, I got to talk to the guy who writes Connor checks. But and it's not Connor, it's Dana White. But with all due respect, you would never talk to the other fighter, right? You would never talk. You, when you do a deal, when you do Kelvin Gaslam versus Robert Whitaker, you're not talking to Whitaker, you're talking to the UFC, right? Yeah, but the whole thing is, all of you guys created this guy, like he's running the show, he's the this, he's this. But he understand Floyd Mayweather write his own check. Sure. Uh, Triple G write his own check. These big, these big bosses. Connor is, you know, I think he's, he's like I said, he's number one prostitute for the, you know, for the UFC. They can pimp him any way they want. Uh, okay, so who's who's Habib's boss? Habib is his own boss. Well, I mean, who? Everyone in the UFC it, it, it has the same boss. Yeah, whatever. If Dana White write the check, Dana White buzz then. Okay, so what's Dana saying about the fight? Like I said, he haven't talked. You know, I, I, I'm not even asking Dana White about the fight. If Dana White, he wants to make this fight, he understands that's the biggest fight in UFC history. But one of the things we're not going to do, everybody back to fight this clown. We're not going to fight this clown. All this clown is, is caring about, you know, posting photos and Whoa. if i got a little ass like that i'm not gonna post anything on it <laughs> you know uh, this is embarrassing man like remember i said that before and everybody said ali is a jealous guy ali's this you know the guy is seeking attention he getting the wrong attention he want to piss uh like he have a two inch with a uh, red panties and he posted on the internet and this is what kind of guy khabib is gonna fight and it's okay because we want to beat his ass but this is he doesn't set a good example for the sport. He doesn't set a good example for kids. But we have to fight him. And I guess if we have to fight him, we're going to have to fight him. If we don't fight him, we don't give him. Do you agree with me that this fight could very well be the biggest fight in UFC history? Yeah, I agree with you. Listen, at the end of the day, man, I can talk shit about Conor Ola as a person. But I can't take away from him. He's a great fighter. He's a two-time champ. He's a champ champ. You know, I, when it comes to his skill set, he's, you know, he's one of the best. But at the end of the day, I, I, we all think he's a And I don't think, and I think he's, you know, he have no other way but fighting Khabib. Now, we see all his coaches, this little mission, John Kavanaugh, talking about, oh. oh, we need to fight Nate Diaz. Go fight Nate Diaz. If this is what you want to do, go ahead. Nate Diaz lost 10, 10 fights on his feet. Nothing but love and respect for Nate. But if this is what you, you're going to fight, go fight. Khabib is the toughest fight, but if Conor want to get his work, he needs to sign this paper. If he doesn't, we move on. Is there a paper out there to sign? Is there a paper out there? Yeah. Are you are you an investigator or what? Yes. You are, you are police? Yes. I told you flat <laughs> out. I said, Dana White, Yes. He did not, uh, Conor did not talk to his boss. His boss, Dana White, did not talk to his boss. Okay. And it's okay because we're not going to ask him. Why is it so personal? Why why are you so upset? I, I see you, you you when you talk about Kavanaugh, Connor. Why do you, why is it so personal to you? You know it's so personal. You on the bus and you got a twenty six friend throwing a dolly on you and I try to attack you. You're gonna be mad. Why I can't? It's it is person. Okay. It's one hundred percent person. I there was at the Ultimate Fighter fight and I the UFC press come to me and say hey, please I see his uh, Artem. And, gone and said, please don't do anything and don't say anything. They had a fight. I said, okay, you know, but they, uh, they just, I don't like these guys, man. What they did was not cool. What, what's go so, so I, I see that you're very fired up and I understand why. I get it. But last couple of months, the thing at PFL with Usman, something else happened in Chicago, right? With PFL, what's going on? Are you fired up? Why, why are you so upset these days? I'm not so far. I'm every, like, my team. Is 100% we all together. Everybody's the enemy. Everybody else, not with my team, not my fighters. They all enemies, and they all can get it. Yeah, even me. You got tell the world you got mad at me. You blocked me. You can right? get it too. If you, you can get it too, if you, if you're gonna go down line with me, we can get it. <laughs> well, I already got it from you. You blocked me on Twitter, Instagram, everything. You got really mad. 
because I a lot of people they are there they fake people and they can be mad at you and they still talk to you and they want to do business with you but when you cross me I don't even want to talk to you I blocked you from Twitter I blocked you from Instagram and because you said something to me and I didn't appreciate it and I say you know what fuck you and moved on and after that we straighten things out and I'm talking to you now we're good yeah. Yeah, you under probation. A probation. <laughs> so yeah. if, I, if I screw this up, I'm done. I, I don't honestly. I don't get second chances. But at the end of the day, I believe you didn't mean it. This is why we we're talking. But okay. at the end of the day, if you meant it, I will not be talking. No, no, no. Uh, I hate all of you guys. I hate all this media. No, I don't believe that for a second. Now I don't I do. believe that. You love the media. This is great for you. It's not great for me. It's not about me. Listen, everybody thinks it's about me. It's about my fight. It's about Frankie Edgar. It's about Cody Garbrandt. It's about Henry Saludo. It's about Kevin Gustin. It's about David Branch. This is not me. I'm nothing. I'm the guy who behind the desk pushing the paper. But what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to stop, the UFC have 600 fighters. And if I can promote my fighters, I promote them because they work their ass off. And if I need to promote them. I need to tell people why Kevin Gustin deserves a title shot. I know why people, people like tell me, Cody Garbrandt is not going to get a title shot. He got it. They told me Henry Sahur is not going to fight Demetrius Johnson. He got it. They said Zachary is not going to fight uh, David Branch. He got it. They say Kevin Gaston is not going to get a title shot against Webster. He got it. I'm doing my job. That's it. But yeah. I'm doing my job because they earn it, not because I'm a good manager, not because I'm just a, a UFC employee like everybody says, you know. And I'm just, uh, I'm just doing my job because I'm passionate about these guys and I care about these guys. Okay, so since you break it, bring it up, what, what, what do you say uh, in response to people who say that you work for the UFC or that you have some kind of agreement with the UFC? What do you make of this? I I'm saw trying you... to get a job with Bellator. <laughs> I'm trying to get a job with BFL. Any promotion out there, I'm going to work with them. The whole thing is, let me explain to you something. Okay. Because a lot of managers out there, all of you can go f*** yourself if you're going to hate on Number one, every manager out there, they have an access to Dana White, Hunter, Sean Shelby. They all do. They choose to burn a bridge. Me, I understand. I have 100 fighters I manage. If I burn a bridge or I get in a fight, I fight with Dana White behind closed doors. I, I argue with Sean and Mick behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? But the media is not going to know about it. And a lot of these guys, they think they become the celebrities. They become the stars. They go, oh, this guy did this, Dana said this, Dana this, guess what? If some Dana wanna say F me, he can say it to me. But I wanna say F him, he can say it to me behind closed doors. That's what man does. You know? I don't need to disrespect Dana White in public. He doesn't need to disrespect me in public. We can disrespect each other behind closed doors if we need to, but if there's no need for argument. I got guys they need fight. They need contract. Mayochi, he's not getting a title. Why do you think that? Because his contract, all this fighting, all this argument, guess what? Why the f*** are they going to give him a rematch? He deserves it 100%. A rematch. He's not getting it. You know why? Because too much bad blood. And if I'm going to put my ego on the line, and because I have an ego to hurt my fighters, I'm going to shut the f*** up. I'm going to let the UFC to be. I'm going to let BFL to be. I'm going to let Bellator to be. All daily. Last week, I didn't sleep for two days. He was out of the tournament. He wanted to go to the media and talk and do all this. I say, Paul, be quiet. And guess what? Me and Mike Hogan got it done. That's it, man. It's all about, and a lot of people out there, they, they, they want to go talk about, you remember all this talk about free agency, oh, free this, free this, free this, free this. Guess what? Who got All the fighters did. That's it. But Why? At the end of the day, what do you mean the fighters did? A lot of guys, a lot of guys played the wrong hand. Like, what's his name? The, uh, the black kid, he's a welterweight. He went to Bellator and lost two in a row. What's his name? Oh, Lorenz Larkin. Lorenz Larkin got f Because Lorenz Larkin, I think he's a, he's, he's a really good fighter. He's a tough five fighter. And he was a really close title shot. But he take a risk. And I hope Bellator paid him a lot of money. And I think they did. You know? But... You can't take gamble with your fighters over your ego. And that's it. That's, you know, that's how the business is. All my guys getting paid. All my guys. We got Henry fighting for the title. Cody Garbrandt's going to match up to Dillashaw. Um, Kevin Gaston fighting for the title. 
Jessica, I, I probably gonna fight for the title next. You know, oh my guy's happy. That's all I care about. And 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 you aren't compromising anything by getting these opportunities. You're saying that you're doing it the right way. Bro, if my guys are happy, all of them, yeah, they get in fight on a regular basis, and they get in title stuff. The only thing, you know, I'm not doing. Somebody's me in my. Nobody Stop. is. Fighting. What is wrong with you? Stop. Well, how... Because you said I'm compromising. What I'm compromising? Okay, and and and, and listen, man, listen, listen, yeah. listen. Listen, my haters, my, listen, lately, I need more haters because more success, you got to have more haters. But the whole thing is, this is not about me. This is about the hardworking man and woman who train, get yeah. concussion, get knocked out in training, get cut, get injured. I'm at the UFC Institute every day, make sure my guy is doing okay. My guy, you know, like the, the health is okay. I don't sleep, but I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm grateful. And, and I'm not going to fit for nobody. How, how did Khabib feel about Conor being invited by Putin to the uh, World Cup? Bro, listen to me. It doesn't mean you ask to get a picture with Putin. You got invited by Putin. He did not get, if he got invited by Putin, good for him. Guess what? You think Khabib don't get invited from different presidents all over the world? That's not what Khabib does. Khabib wants to be with the people. They want to hang out with the people. He's the people champ. Connor did the shit. He's just for media. He's fake. He's not authentic. He won't show, oh, I'm in your country with 30, 40 security because he know he can't go there on his own. You know? It's, it's, this is what he wants for him. I'm not hanging on him. And he got this, what's his name, Artem? This guy got slapped by Zubair support and, and got slapped by Khabib. Didn't do nothing about it. And now he on an up. They want to be in the picture? You know what? If somebody slap me and I'm four years old, I'm going to slap you back. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care if you're King Kong. You slap me, I'm going to slap you back. And whatever happened, happened. You know? And if Khabib fight Connor, Artem needs to fight Zubair because Zubair slapped him and he didn't do nothing about it. Mm. And Zubair is coming back on his suspension in October. And if you want to be a man, fight the guy who slapped you. Would they do like a big world tour or something like this for, for this fight? Bro, why you keep trying to get information on me? Like, well, what do no you mean? Fights. What are you talking it's about? Nothing. There's no fight. Con Connor, but... Connor is, he have a legal problem. They're yeah. not going to do nothing without it. Probably Connor is going to give the UFC run around to negotiate this deal. You know, nobody comes to me about a no deal. Nobody comes to me about nothing. But they said possibility is going to happen. I know the UFC is, is, is in it to make money. And I know they make the biggest fight. That's what Dana White does. That's what Sean Shelby does. That's what McMahon does. That's what Hunter does. They make the biggest fight they can, 100%. And they're going to make this fight happen, but they have to get a deal with Conor. They, my deal is easy. I know what I want, and it's very easy. We're going to get a deal done. I'm not even worried about it. Okay. So no worries there, but you have to wait for the Connor part. Is there any chance Khabib fights someone else? He, he he's mentioned this a couple times. George Saint Pierre. There's been talk of. Uh, is there any chance that he actually doesn't fight Connor next? Let me explain to you something, brother. Okay. Khabib fought some guy on an hour notice. He went to bed and told me, "Wake me up when I know an opponent." Yeah. And he fought uh, the guy in New York, whatever his name, Al Quinta. Yeah. Khabib do not give a f who you fight. It doesn't matter. Whatever he's gonna fight next, he's gonna get his ass whooped regardless. Anybody, you know. Has Tony Ferguson's name been brought up? He's been talking a lot lately, saying that he's feeling better. But Tony Ferguson, I can't talk about the man anymore. He come to me at the fight, he shake my hand, and you know, Tony's Tony, man. Tony, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna talk bad about Tony because the man make an offer and come shake my hand. I, I got want you to talk respect bad about for him. Tony. Uh, he's a man, but at, at the end of the day, this fight tried to make it happen four times. I'm not interested to this fight. The UFC is not interested in this fight. And maybe he needs to fight the winner of Dustin Poirier and Eddie Alvarez. And he get his title shot. Okay. Now, as far as, far as October 6th goes, is that, is that when Khabib wants to fight regardless? Is that, is that what he's hoping for? Is that what he's training for? Bro, Khabib is ready tomorrow. Okay. Bring, bring, bring this Irish and we're ready. You know, bring this, bring this Irish and his whole team. We're gonna beat we're gonna beat Connor first 
And after the fight, we're going to beat his whole team in the parking lot. No, no. What are you talking about? That's crazy. Yes. What happened yeah. in Chicago, the PFL? Mm -hmm. What happened? There was reports that you got arrested. Can you tell us what happened? Bro, bro, nobody happened in Chicago, bro. People, people afraid. You know what I'm saying? When you're afraid, people, now I talk to people. Now I'm going to stop talking. To people I don't know, I don't talk to any fool. But I talked to a guy. Yeah. He told me I, I am his biggest fan. And he shake my hand and he called the cops on me. But guess what? All his fighters, he, he signed. One week later, they signed with me because he called the cops on me. Why did he call the cops on you? Bro, I'm not, bro, it's nobody. It's I'm nobody. Did you, go, did you go, did you get arrested? No, I didn't get arrested. You'll be, uh, my, my picture will be on Front Nose Magazine. <laughs> Pretty, I didn't get arrested. Okay, so why did he call In the New cops? York, you asked about New York. Yeah, PFL. New York, with some drunk guy, tried to attack Osman. And I'm not going to attack Osman. I just... I'm gonna back up my guy. If you, if I see you out there and somebody tries to jump you, I'm gonna jump too. Yeah. You know, doesn't make me a gangster. I'm a father. I'm a husband. You know, I'm, I'm not a gangster. I'm not like a thug, but I'm not a. Bitch. What's going on with Usman? Bro, Usman, we offer. It was a whole thing with Cody Covington and all the stuff. We offer to fight Darren Till. You need to vacate the two guys if they don't want to fight. And have Darren Till find Osman. Osman is the only guy in his division who wants to fight. And Darren Till. Have them fight each other for title. You you offered this. I offered this to the US. And what did they say? I, they said, we'll get back to you. They're probably not going to do it, but I understand why. So what do you think he's going to do? You think he's going to fight Till? You think Woodley fights Covington and then Till fights Usman? I think Darren, uh, Darren Till fight Woodley. Oh. And I think they're going to strip Kobe Covington. This is my opinion. And then Usman fights Covington later? Bro, this is the fight we won for four, for four, four times, and Kobe don't want. You know, listen, everybody hating on Kobe. Kobe, I can't hit on him. They got a title shot. He become a champion by talking. And why I'm going to say about him? I can't say shit about him. Right. I can't say he's a bitch. I can't say that. I can't say about him. That. You know? But, listen, I got a big week next week. Is is uh, my man, my man, uh, Cody Garbrandt? Yeah. He's gonna cream his belt back because a lot of people doesn't know this, and I really, I know Cody is not speaking too much about what happened, but I feel I'm obligated to speak about it. Okay. You know, his last camp, Cody for three months, flew to Germany, flew to Las Vegas, flew to LA. He was getting f stuck with needles by doctors. He didn't barely train. All over the place, appearances, sponsors, all the stuff. And six weeks out, eight weeks out, he trained one week. And the rest is on cardio. He didn't train for the DJ fight. And I'm not taking any way away from TJ De La Shaw. DJ, a great champion. I don't know the man as a person, but he seemed very cool, you know. But I think DJ, and I have nothing but respect for him and his team. But I think they stuff. They should never give Cody Garbrandt a title stuff. Why? Because you're going to fight uh, a focused, healthy. Cody's fighting for his son, kid. You know? He's fighting for something now. He's not this young, crazy guy anymore. He's fighting his family. He's healthy. And he have two good coaches by his side every day. Danny Castillo and Chris Herzog. And I think this guy is very underrated. And I think that Cody's ready. And I think he's going to finish DJ. And I think TJ is going to be why I give this title shot from the beginning. But Cody's a star. The UFC want him to be the champ. And um, it's part of the business. But you should never give Cody a title shot because Cody's going to knock him out in a week. And you have Cejudo on that card too. Oh, man. You, you want to get me started on this one? Why? <laughs> because you know how I feel. Listen, I, listen. I, I don't have nothing against Demetrius Johnson. I think he's one of the best. He's great. But I see Demetrius Johnson. He's this, you know, he, he, he has tricks. He's a tricky guy. He's tough, you know. But you see him getting dropped. You see him getting taken down. He's fighting an Olympic champ. A guy, when he fought him the last time, he's fighting for almost a year and a half. And I think that uh, Henry's going to knock him out. Henry's boxing. You see him knocking people out lately, you know. I think Demetrius Johnson is good. Henry hit too hard. And I think uh, 
I think it's better for the division and it's better for uh, Dimitri Johnson if he loses. Because if he loses, it's a good story. He lost, come back, become the champion again. Because nobody gives a f about this weight class. And the reason is, you know, you have a champion, all you care about playing video games. You know, no, and he, yeah, he's I, I, I can agree with you team. that you say better for the division, oh. but not better for DJ to lose. That's just. That what happened? Sense. I agree with you if you say, oh, better for the division, there's more parity, there's a new guy, but not better for DJ if he loses. I, I think it's better for the UFC's pocket if DJ loses. Well, I mean. Bro, are you telling me top five Cody Garbrandt is not one of the biggest stars in the UFC? Right now? Bro, he got 1.62 million to all followers. Wait, what does that have to do with DJ? Wait, huh? what does that have to do with Demetrius Johnson? I say it's the best thing for the flyweight division. Yeah. Demetrius Johnson to lose. But why? Because people, people, like he win too much. Like he's it's nothing new. He playing video games. He doesn't talk. <laughs> he doesn't do interview. He doesn't the man. do nothing. You know. Now you're just being a hater. I'm not a hater. I like the guy. I respect the guy. But I think Henry's always gonna knock his block out. All he, right, that's your guy. That's what I think. I agree. You know, yeah, I mean, it's your guy. I think the UFC want him to it. lose too. You think the UFC want Demetrius Johnson to win? Let's be real here. Why not? Because people, he's already have this advantage. He's weight one twenty five. Yeah. Okay. He's a little guy. When the little guy come out and say, "I'm playing video game all day. I'm this. I'm this. I'm this." How are people are supposed to take him this killer? You know. You know, he's video games. Killer. Video games you know? are like the most popular think, thing in I the world. I think Henry is a killer, and I think Henry's gonna knock him out. Video games are very popular, but I get it. It's your guy. You're supporting your guy. Any news for us? You want anything? Any any news you could break? Your first time on this show. We're making you famous here, putting you on this platform. Anything you can share with us? You can share it with us. I got. I got. I, got, I find a map. My match is that guy. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I was talking to her. I'm looking at myself talking. What the f is going on here? You know. Listen. It's a. Uh, it, it's everything is beautiful, man. Uh, him's the greatest fighting this weekend. Yes. In one FC. Yes. You know, um, he's the guy I owe everything to him. Without him, I'm nothing. You know, and I'm really, really excited about Cody Garbrandt uh, fighting healthy, man. This guy have not been healthy for a long time, and I'm telling you, Cody Garbrandt healthy is a f problem with for anybody. And you in, know what I want him to do? Yeah. What I want him to do? He win this title and maybe fight for the 125 belt. But I know he said he want to give TJ a rematch. Another but one. I don't think he should give TJ a rematch. Okay. But I'm not the boss. He's the boss. Sure. He can make, he do whatever he wants. And Frankie's fighting Korean Zombie? Yeah, listen, at the end of the day, you know, if, if Ortega's fighting Max Holloway, right? Yeah. Frankie's not going to wait around for people. He's not. At the end of the day, but one thing I want to say, Frankie gave Ortega a chance on a one week notice, right? Yeah. You know? Not one week. Not one week. Whatever, two weeks, whatever the f it is. He gave a title shot. Yeah. But you see what other guys do. They don't want to fight. Big difference. You know? Big difference between three weeks and three days. Whatever it is. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Frankie Edgar is a f living legend. He got balls and he's a fighter. Everybody else is f fighting just to win. Is that the guy fight for his legacy. By the way, the last time we had you on the show, you said that Owen Roddy was there. He wasn't there. So is there anything you want to say to Owen Roddy? I apologized to him on Twitter. Okay. And I said, I'm sorry. Okay? But don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I think, honestly, out of the whole team, he's the guy always talking right. He's not talking smack. But everybody else, they can go itself except him because he thinks he's a decent guy. What's your prediction? When does the fight happen? Tell us right now. When's your prediction? When does it happen? Finally, Khabib, Connor, biggest fight in UFC history. What does your gut say? If I'll tell you something. If I don't, if I, if I don't get something the day after court, a final court, we're not fighting in October. If you don't get something by Friday, July no, 27th. No, Connor's court. Like if, if I, if they're not, I need a date. I need 10 weeks for Khabib to get ready. Well, yeah, like, that's Friday. That's his Friday because his court case is, is, is his hearing is Thursday, so 27th I, of July. I hope they free him. I hope he doesn't get to jail. I hope he doesn't get nothing. I hope he go free. So you need something by Friday, and if not by Friday, you're out? Monday. I said, no, oh. I'm not going to fight October 6th. Okay. And if you it's... know, because I need, I need, Khabib is coming 
he's he's gonna be do a Q and A in Canada, in Calgary, yeah, on Saturday, you know, and after that he's coming to the U.S. and and we're gonna see. I need something by Monday. Oh. I need to know something by Monday. And, and if not October sixth, it would be uh, December twenty nine. I don't know, man. It can be in Brooklyn. It can be in New York. It can be whatever. Doesn't matter where this fight is gonna be. We we raise the fight. Okay. But, but, but please. Yes. Please, no more pictures under one of the small ass dicks. Stop. Please, it. stop it. Please. Why are you so upset? Go have a Snickers or something. You're too upset. Jeez, those arms. They're gigantic. I don't like this guy. <laughs> I don't uh, like this guy. Ali, can, can you tell all my friends at the UFC that I say hello, please? Okay, no problem. <laughs> Got it. And Dan, when's Dan's next fight? Give us an update on Dan. Come on. Ige. Dan, who do you want to fight? My main man, The Vault. The I'll real, come on on your show. The no. real brain. You're on now. Yeah, because we you're the one. He's name? the one who blocked me. What's his name? We, want, we have a name. We have a name. Let's go. Who's the name? Uh, uh, Steven, what's his name? What's the guy I want you to fight? Here's his name. Steven Pearson. Why? Get ready, Steven Pearson. I don't know who he is, but get ready. <laughs> coming to Dallas. All right. Oh, Dallas, really? You know, Dan now he's knocking people Dallas. out, and he's one of the top managers in the game. Amazing. What a story. Okay. The vault. Just yeah. can't say anything to this guy? Uh-oh. All right. Jessica and I have had our ups and downs, too, but now we're good, right? Well, I mean, I, listen, let's not talk about the bad. Okay. Right? I'm all behind us. <laughs> all we right. Put all it right. away those... And Mexico years ago. Yes, we're all good. Everyone's good. Everyone's happy. I feel the love. I wish you all the best. Ali, good to talk to you. Keep pumping that iron, my man. Busting out of them shirts. You got it. All you right. Got it. You got it. Thank you. We'll talk Bye. to you soon. There he is. Ali Abdelaziz. All kinds of fired up. Holy smokes. A lot of, uh, a lot of tension in the air there. Sheesh. All right. Good times. Thank you very much to Ali Abdelaziz. Appreciate it. Matter of moments, we'll wrap this bad boy up with a little New York Rick and your, and your questions. Uh, I'm seeing here colleague Brett Akimoto reporting Weidman, Rockhold, New York. I was looking at the rankings earlier, as you may have seen. That's uh, one that I heard. They were discussing, and apparently it is coming to fruition for New York. Very interesting. So it is not going to be Mr. Paulo Costa. It is apparently going to be... <laughs> every time... Every time uh, Ali is on the show, I get a lot of text messages afterwards. It is always very interesting. All right, so that does it for today's interviews. That was like a whirlwind. And uh, in a matter of moments, we're going to be joined by New York Rick, answer some questions, and then go home. It has been a long day. As I said at the top of the show, a lot going on. Invicta this past weekend, Hamburg this past weekend. Welterweight division in turmoil. Jacare Branch. Uh, Alexa Grasso out. Angela Hill, Courtney Casey, Max Holloway situation, PFL. Kane training at the WWE headquarters. Anderson back. Ortega says he's paid, but how much? You could come. What are you waiting for your. Uh... I know you're here. It's just, it's all very casual these days. Calgary coming up. Sage North Cal. What do you got? Blueberries? <laughs> uh, but you do have a pot to piss in. Now I do. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay, now I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take these off because last time I got a little weirded out by it all. Okay, it's been a big day, my friend. It has. I turn to you for some answers. Answers? Well, I may have some questions. Okay. Um, Ali just really fired up, huh? Yeah. He uh, he went off there. Once what do we got? Goes. Is this the stuff that Henzo Gracie brought in? No. No. Guava? No. No, it's not. What is that? Oh, she told me. It's it's actually Britney's. Oh, um, okay. But I forgot. This is a Conor McGregor thing. Yeah. 
big week for him coming up. According to Ali Abdelaziz, it, it may be bigger than just yes. the court case. <laughs> if he doesn't, if he doesn't hear by Monday, oh my. Um, we may be looking at a, at a different fight. I need a Snickers. You need a Snickers. Um, okay, what do we got? Questions. Okay. First question from Highlights Four Eighty. Which bout are you looking forward to the most this Saturday at UFC Calgary? I think this one flying a little bit under the radar. A really solid card from top to bottom. Yeah, this is Dana White's birthday card, so you know it's a big one. Um, up top, we've got Alvarez and Poye. Yep. Uh, Aldo and Stevens. Yo- Yoana and Tisha Torres. Um, Alexander Hernandez versus Olivier oh, Alvin man. Mercier. And that's just the main card that's on Fox. That's huge. Jordan Meehan um, on the preliminary card. Uh Islam Makachev against yeah. Cajun Johnson. New uh, single out, Cajun Johnson. No, if That's you saw right. that. I'm um, region. Uh, it is a great card. Devin Powell, our old friend, remember him? Yep. And his... Uh, you testicle? Know, yes, his testicles. It's okay, we can Texas. talk about it. Uh, Nina Ansaroff against Randa Marcos is an important fight. Uh, Alexis Davis against Caitlin Chukagian. John McDessie against Ross Pearson. There's a lot to like on this card. Uh, but, of course, in the end, you have to go with the main event, right? For me, it's the main event. Yeah, it has I've, to be. I've the been main waiting event. for, for if, that to if be resolved. If not the main event, if we're going to exclude that because everyone loves that fight, if sure. not the main event, Alexander Hernandez versus uh, Olivier Orbian Mercier. I, I like that one too. I'm definitely interested in how Joanna looks um, against somebody who's not uh, Rose. And I think Tisha's a tough matchup, although I, th- I expect Joanna's a relatively decent favorite there. Minus um, 293. I'm, I'm interested. I think Tisha might be underrated i think tisha might be yep. overlooked here i think she's a good tornado. shot um but who's we'll the see favorite in the aldo stevens fight take a guess aldo yeah but not that big minus 115 plus 101 another one who we've only seen recently against the same opponent it's right. going to be interesting to see how aldo looks against somebody else last time that happened um i think uh i think aldo was able to bounce back against edgar look you know relatively good um i expect Aldo to win this one, but I wouldn't count Stevens out. Yeah, it is a good card. I'm happy Super. for the people of Calgary because UFC 149 right. was a mess. This one doesn't have a title fight, but it has remained relatively intact. So hopefully, I mean, we we know that crazy things can happen on the way to a fight. Hopefully, right now, it you know it's looking good and it remains intact. Top Corey to Alvarez bottom is just amazing. Calgary gets a very good card. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about a top contender? This is from Spud O Spud. How do you feel about top contender versus top contender matchups? As an example, Usman versus Till, Blades versus Volkov. Is it smart matchmaking or does it hurt the division in the long run? Are are we seeing too many fights where they're eliminating top contenders now, or do or do you still like that that um, exists as a process? For- I think you have to be strategic. I think Usman Till. They're both at the very top, so they have to cancel each other out. I think when it's lower, when it's Adesanya Costa, then it doesn't make sense. Sure. But I think when it's two guys who are, you know, they're no longer prospects. They're now contenders. They're at the top. They're both on amazing streaks. You have to fight them. I understand, and I'm a proponent of this, of not canceling them out. But there comes a time where they have to fight. Early on, though, when it means nothing, when it's not a main event, when it's not a co-main event, when it's just a prelim fight, then I think it's silly to have them cancel each other out. Agree with everything you said. As you just said before I walked in, um, it seems like Weidman is going to be booked against Rockhold. Yeah. Therefore, Costa is not going to get um, what he wanted. Yeah. Do you do Costa versus Adesanya I don't, now? I don't, I don't like it. You don't like that as a Too fight? Too soon. What do you think of Weidman-Rockhold? I think we've got some unresolved yeah, you things there. The I, I, I think it's a good time for it. Initially, I didn't like it when I heard it, but now I like it more. And especially in New York. I, I didn't like, like Weidman Costa for Weidman. I liked it for yeah. Costa. But in New York, it, I think it's time. The one I really wanted for Weidman was Jacare. Once he was booked against yeah, Branch, yeah. I kind of felt like they would do Rockhold, and, I, and, and, and I've warmed up to it. Yeah, and Rockhold flirting with going up, I think – this is that's the matchup, though, that's that I want to see for him at middleweight. Before he moves up to 205. If, he, if he's going to 205, I feel like Weidman Rockhold I still want to see. I'm still interested. Okay. Cram asks, which potential UFC 228 headliner does the most pay-per-view sales? Woodley versus Till? Cyborg versus Nunes? Wow. Wow, that is a really tough question. I'll go Cyborg Nunes. You think so? I think the internet 
would get excited about Till getting a title shot. But again, his fan base is not buying pay-per-views. Different system over mm-hmm. in the UK. So I think the champion versus champion thing would get people. Cyborg is a name. I think she's a draw. So I'll go with Cyborg Nunes. I think I fall but on I don't that think side. That one's happening. That one's not happening on September 8th. No. I still feel like they need to just wait for Covington to get, you know, just get better. That's the biggest fight by far, right? That is. Um, Handsome Rob asks, is it looking more and more likely that Cyborg's days in the UFC are coming to an end once her current contract is completed? Uh, Do you think the UFC will keep the women's 145 division around if and when Chris leaves? If Um, Cyborg is still the champion, no. That's just the perfect reason to get rid of it, right? Yeah. And there's no one else. I know you're very high on Felicia Spencer. Yeah, big win at Invicta. Yeah, called out Megan Anderson. Do you like that? I like that. I mean, is she if, ready for Megan Anderson? Is she? Well, on she's only level? five and zero right now. Yeah. Um, but I think she's got the skill set. It's just at the moment, Megan Anderson fights for the UFC. Felicia Spencer fights for Invicta. Right. Um. So you know, well, we there's know some things. There's some things that have to happen there. Um. But I do think Felicia is one to watch out. Forty five. They're just doing this season of tough now. It almost, you know, feel useless. It it hasn't even come out yet. If they're thinking about cutting forty five, um, there's still some time for for a cyborg's contract uh, stuff to get resolved. But um, I would like to see forty five stay around. I think I think it's it's becoming um, clear that cyborg is is the main reason it's around. But the same thing could be said for thirty five with Ronda Rousey. I think it it needs to. I think it needs some time to develop. And I yeah. think. This investment in tough is is That's good. a reason that Promising. they're saying. Although a lot of people are saying they didn't pick the right people, they didn't pick as many forty fivers as I would have liked. Right. There's a lot of thirty five pound women um, that are that are blowing up to get on that. Um, I would like to see it stick around. I think there's few, I think there's potential for it. I would also you know the main question is is it coming to a bitter end? It seems that way, but also Cyborg is known for you know publicly negotiating. So let's see what happens. I mean, if they really get into the boxing business, she would be a perfect candidate. But that thing is kind of quieted a bit. I mean, yeah. we're approaching a year, a year plus it's been since that was really discussed. And there's no real movement there. Yeah. But maybe after the contract, uh, after she's a free agent, maybe that right. is a time for, for that to, conversation to happen. Okay. Steve Pushy asks, seriously, though, are you interested in a fight between Austin Vanderford and Mike Esquire Jackson? <laughs> I did not expect that. I... Didn't expect it either. I'm not a fan of that. I am just shocked they didn't sign him. Yeah, but they didn't sign him off contender. That doesn't mean they won't sign him. I'm shocked they didn't give him a contract right there. On the there. spot, yeah. If I'm any other organization, I sign that guy that night. He's got the perfect gimmick. The perfect gimmick. You are guaranteed that Paige and all her millions of Instagram followers are gonna she's gonna promote it. You're guaranteed that she's gonna be sitting there in the front row. People hate the guy, they're jealous of the guy because they're a couple. It's just, it's just, it's, it's, it writes itself. Yeah. How do you not capitalize on that? Makes no sense. And don't tell me you're above that because well, we've made some questionable signings. No, I don't mean you. Them. No, no. Uh, they made some questionable signings already. So like, come on. Well, could there be, and this is just me freestyling here. Could there be something to the fact that they want the, the signings? to still have a significance. They want the the ones who advance on Dana White's contender series to have the significance. They didn't feel, you know, Dana and the matchmaking team didn't feel like that performance was the one that gets them in. And then they bring them in the back door, sign them separately from that so that they don't grant it on, on you know, the Dana White's contender series for, for whatever it is, there's a merit-based system to that. They decide, hey, you had the fight that night that, that earned you the spot. That might not have been the fight for him. So they kept it off and now... There's a separate way to get him on a fight card. I guess, but it doesn't sound like he has anything, you know. There, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's brewing. Right. Um, Although he did bring up Mike Jackson, but I don't think Mike Jackson's getting another chance in <laughs> well, the UFC anyway. So I mean, why Mike Jackson? You, first of all, I feel like that's going. You're punching down and wait a little I bit. I felt that. And also, he's not in the UFC. Pick somebody who who's aspirational. Yeah, that's um, true. It was a weird call out. It, but it was a perfect call out if you want to keep pissing people off. <laughs> Because, like, here you are not, like, going for the easiest Yeah, guy. I, I you know didn't I mean? love it, but uh, that's a good point. Um, but the thing is, he's so nice. He's such a nice dude. But he's actually accepting of it. He's calling himself Mr. Van Zandt. Freaking he's, brilliant. He's smart. He's playing so it exactly brilliant. the way you need it's to so play it. so brilliant. Keep that up. If I'm someone, I sign him tomorrow. It's just, like, you don't, you don't get those opportunities every day. You yeah. don't get these types of stories every so day. So do you think... Okay, so then 
based on what you're saying, do you think there's any way he doesn't end up there? I have to think it happens. Even though, I th- I even think though it it's not happens. in this direction right now, I yeah. think it has no, to happen. I think happen. it eventually happens. Okay. If he keeps winning. Our last question from Edvin Benoni. Do you think Ariel Hawani reads all tweets during the show and constantly holds for laughter? Are you preventing yourself from breaking while you're reading some of these tweets? Okay. Well, sometimes, I mean, I see a lot of them. I don't see all of them. Someone actually asked me if it was really me who was uh, retweeting as the show was going on. Oh, and I am. They need to know but that. It, but, it, it, but if you notice, like today, there were a lot of Skype and in studio. I can't look at my computer, but there's nothing on my computer. Like I'll flip it around right now. I can't flip it around. Anyway, it's it's just it's just my tweet deck up and email and uh, Slack, which is like a chat thing to talk with everyone in the back. But that's it. It's there's no real reason to have this. So I see things and I'll and I'll and I'll retweet. Sometimes there have been times I'll admit I can't think of one right now that something really serious was happening. God, I wish I could remember. And I wanted to laugh. Do you know? I don't know a specific example, but, but I've, there been, have been, I've been in those moments. There's, yeah. one, there's one time in particular that I was... Oh, uh, Diego Sanchez. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. Where it was like a 45-minute answer. Lionheart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 45-minute yeah. answer. People were writing to me trying to get me to laugh. Yeah, they're trying to make you break. Uh, we have a, a friend and Evans who tries to get me to laugh with his um, Simon Cowell. For some reason, for the longest time, he's been sending me Simon Cowell pictures. That there's like a you know about this? I didn't know that this oh, was yes. the inside gimmick. Oh, this gimmick. has been in like a six year thing where he sends me like. So let's say he likes an interview, doesn't like an interview. There is oh, a Simon a Cowell like facial expression, not uh. just judging on the beach, running <laughs> something. There is a Simon Cowell like expression reaction to anything. Happy, sad, bored, disgust, whatever. Um, so he sends me that. I, I sometimes crack up internally. Um, but for the most part, uh, I'm able to keep it together. Yeah, you do a very good job of Thank not you. breaking. Um, like that was Fedor. It. That, was, <laughs> that was it for the questions. Um, worth mentioning Nick Newell, um, obviously coming up on uh, Dana White's Contender Series tomorrow. tomorrow. Will you watch? Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I think, to be honest, I think he doesn't even belong there like he's yes. he's a guy that i would have signed out right um but i think he'll have a good opportunity to prove himself and and uh, get in anyway man this has been a crazy day digested no. a lot anthony smith coming on at the top of the show how do you feel about the whole anthony smith gustafson dc sunning him not sunning he, sunning he, him. he it was I'm a disappointed it was a, in you it was a brilliant move by dc yes um i thought he definitely put him in his place i would have liked to hear alex a little more he didn't. He didn't see it, or he didn't address it, or what? Do you believe him that he didn't see it? Tough. That's tough to avoid. Yeah. Um, it seems like the world was was watching on that one. Um, but hopefully he can put something out soon. Um, in Who? response to it, Gus? Alex. Yeah. He had a perfect opportunity today. He didn't take it. Um, hopefully he can. I think there's some. I think there's some holes in in DC's uh, recent actions. Wow. Look, you you call out Shogun. Yeah. And then he gets starched. Yeah. Um by somebody else i think there's an in there that you could you could criticize yeah or gustafson or anybody who's coming at dc okay that that was a weak move in my opinion wow wow and i think there's and you're a big dc guy i love dc wow look okay i get it we need to get one of those instagram (laughs) pictures new york rick quote that was a weak move i get it end quote um preserving the brock fight but i I don't like that as uh wow i think i think there's there's some uh scrutiny that could be held uh, i'll tell you who comes out looking like a million bucks anthony smith khalil roundtree for taking that for asking yeah for that fight and everybody referencing that khalil roundtree it's been no secret now that khalil um was in the running there not much to really digest from the hamburg card other than the fact that you notice that there was a like a third party sponsor on all the gear I didn't notice. Maybe I just yeah. wasn't paying attention. Weird. Uh, you think the fighters got a cut of that? I have to guess no. No. Uh, Invicta was good. Glory was good. Invicta was great. Glory was great. Um, I think Invicta was was a really good show, actually, from top to bottom. Um, a lot of uh, young fighters kind of making their stamp, but we talked about it. I think Felicia Spencer was she kind was of the, the story there. Who you score the main event for? Are you allowed to say? I will pass on on giving my (laughs) score for the main event because i worked for the promotion um but i thought that's the type of fight if if the result wasn't what uh, people expected i think a rematch could be in order it's not like adam Waite is exactly um brimming uh with with up-and-coming contenders it's kind of all flat after um hamasaki left the division so i I would be interested in that running back i think both of them were tough to the end yeah that was a tough one to score did you how to stall uh 
I wasn't. I wouldn't be offended with three two either way. Yeah, it comes down to whether you prioritize damage or control there. Right. Um, Jin doing doing more of the damage toward the end. Um, Mina obviously in control. So good fight. I was. Uh, there's one this weekend. There's LFA this weekend. There's Ryzen this weekend. And of course, there's the UFC in Calgary on Fox this weekend. There's a lot to discuss on Monday. We shall be back on Monday. Any parting shots? No. Just You're good? Just some more blueberries? Hopefully, we'll get a resolution to that story on Thursday as well with Conor McGregor. But for now, it is time to say goodbye. Where are my headphones? Chill. Sonnen in studio. Fyodor Melianko in studio. Two goats on today's show, right? Well, I don't know if you can have by like definition that doesn't goats. work. Greatest of all times. No, it doesn't work. Anyway, uh Jake or is it Brittany or is it Nick? One of them. You can hear my music and we could say goodbye to Mr. New York Brick over here because it always gets a little weird as I say goodbye and he's just like, you know, waving and eating his blueberries. If you want. No hard feelings either way. Well, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Thank you to everyone who stopped by. Thank you to everyone who watched the show. Let me just pull up my little lineup over here. Okay, there we go. I appreciate it very much. No, I'm going to say goodbye on this one. Is that okay? Or can we not say goodbye on this one? No? Camera one? There we go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> on the delay. I like to say goodbye to the people face to face. I like to, you know... Uh, address them. Uh, thank you very much to all our guests today. Anthony Smith for stopping by. Congratulations to him, squeezing us in uh, in between flights. What a great guy. What a mensch. Chael Sonnen for stopping by in studio. His mother was here. Didn't get a chance to say hello to her, but that was very nice to hear. Joanne Calderwood, great to see her back. Great to see her happy again. And great to see her uh, finding a new home in Las Vegas. Paulo Costa, sorry you didn't get that fight against Waimo. See what's next for him. Katzingano, great stuff. Tyron Woodley, amazing. Frankie Edgar, Anderson Silva, Fyodor Milenko, Austin Vanderford, Alex Volkanovsky, Aldo Ziz, and all. Back next week, same time and place. Till the same. Peace. Somebody